Hi, I'm Guy Wallace, and I'd like to talk with you about performance-based skills for improved transfer and performance impact. I've been working on this since my early days in L&D, starting back in 1979 and in the early 80s. And I'd like to share with you my thinking and my approach to dealing with performance-based skills. Skills are different in an enterprise learning and development context because it's all about improving and sustaining specific performance competence. Performance competence to me is just my code language for the ability to perform tasks to produce outputs to stakeholder requirements. And when we meet or don't meet stakeholder requirements, that leads us to outcomes, positive or negative outcomes. Skills themselves are built on knowledge and are applied differently in varied work processes, also known as work streams and workflows. What's important about performance competence and the skills that enable performance competence is the stakeholder requirements. And that allows you, once you understand the outputs to be produced and the tasks to be performed, what enabling knowledge and skills are required. It's important to think about skills in context. And as it's all about performance competence, in my view, learning and development, that is, it's it's really important to start with the end in mind. Now, I've been doing this approach that I'm going to cover since 1981, and I've been using slightly different language. But back in the day, I used to call my approaches two stages, curriculum architecture design, and modular curriculum development and or acquisition. My first project in doing curriculum architecture design was at Motorola back in 1981, and I was focused on manufacturing supervisors across five different business sectors at over 30 different manufacturing facilities across North America. The first article that was published on performance-based curriculum architecture design was in Training Magazine way back in 1984. I was a co-author with my two business partners and one of our other associates. My first presentation of my methodology was at the Chicago NSPI chapter. NSPI is now ISPI. That was back in 1984, and that led to me doing a national presentation at the 1985 NSPI conference in Dallas. I've also been captured doing a a presentation on curriculum architecture design. It was my ISPI presentation from 1995, and I was invited by our clients at Eli Lilly to present to the HR staff about this methodology that they were thinking about embracing. I also wrote a book in 1999 that I'd started back in 1983 that became Lean ISD, which covered both curriculum architecture design, modular curriculum development and acquisition, and also a narrower approach, a quicker approach for doing things such as performance guides or job aids or electronic performance support systems, when the focus was really narrow on not learning experiences, but on guidance for performance. I've trained and certified dozens of my own staff over the years, beginning back in 1983, and hundreds and hundreds of my client staff at Amico, AT&T, Eli Lilly, General Motors, Siemens Building Technologies, plus a few other smaller firms. This photo is from a session I delivered at General Motors in the late 1990s for the GM staff and their subcontractor populations. My clients at General Motors also produced a video back in 97 for internal communications to their stakeholders groups because this was a very different approach to performance-based instruction or training or learning. This was my methodology, the PAC processes that GM rebranded as MCMI, Modular Curriculum and Modular Instruction. That project lasted from 95 through 2000. Skills in an enterprise context is all about improving and sustaining performance competence. The language that I use nowadays, and I just started this back in 2022, is instructional architecture projects, which lead to many potential instructional development efforts. And when I talk about instruction, I'm talking about both performance guides, my default, 
and learning experiences. When the performance context allows for a reference performance response, which in my view is the vast majority of situations over my 40 plus years as a consultant in the ISD and LXD space, we can use performance guides and not require memorization, which is faulty at times and can't be relied on. My more recent writings about this include my 2022 book, Aligning and Architecting Performance L&D, and a mini book, very narrow on just the instructional architecture approach that I've been using successfully since 1981. For decades, L&D has been trying to use one-size-fits-all approaches and producing or providing generic content in the hopes that they will have a measurable impact to performance. They focus on knowledge out of context, skills out of context, behaviors out of context, and competencies out of context. This seldom works. To use your generic library of l and content or to salvage your prior investments will require some bookending. It's not that difficult to do. You can approach this in a formal means by putting a front end and a back end of content on there that provides the advanced organizers up front and plenty of practice and feedback on the back end. You can do this informally as well by providing a template for completion and use by the supervisor or peers or other experts. And then on the back end, again, provide practice and feedback of that content so that it transfers back to the job. If getting skills right is important, you really should think about using a proven process. It's not that mine is the only process that has been proven to be successful in doing this, but that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. My clients for my 76 curriculum architecture design projects since becoming a consultant in 1982 include Fortune 500 level companies and across every function in a modern enterprise. I've also worked with government institutions such as, such as NASA and their middle management target audiences, plus the Norfolk Naval Shipyard, production supervisors and managers. On my website, I've included outputs from the Norfolk Naval Shipyard project because it was taxpayer funded and therefore I'm making it available to the taxpayers and to those of you who aren't taxpayers here in the US. Skills need to be thought about and addressed in an enterprise context. They shouldn't be addressed out of context because they're less likely to transfer. And if they don't transfer, they're not gonna have a positive impact. They're gonna have a negative impact, a negative return on investment. Let's improve performance together. Now I offer many, many free resources and my books which are available for a nominal fee, but you might wanna consider looking at this, investigating this, and if you need help, I am available as a consultant to help. I hope this makes some sense to you. I'm very wary about the current focus on skills, which are out of context. The late Tom Gilbert bemoaned the cult of behaviors in his 1978 book, Human Competence. This is when the focus was on behaviors without an understanding about the tasks that those behaviors should affect and the outputs or accomplishments that were to be produced and resulting from task performance. Let's not make that same mistake again. We've done that with behaviors. We've done that with competencies. Let's not do that on skills. 